Welcome to Dude RV. Hey, I really appreciate you stopping by, and of course, you got here just in time. That's right, just in time for Dude RV's top 10 must see in 2023 Texas state parks. Before we get too deep into this top 10 must see in 2023 list, I want you to go and click on dudeRV.com. You may need to type that in, dudeRV.com. Find the second page. I'm gonna put a link up here that'll take you to your map. I have documented most of the Texas state parks and have video, multiple videos for each location, as well as the other public campgrounds in the state of Texas. I've been to almost all of those too. And to make it easy on you, I've created a Google map. The link will be up there. That Google map will help you figure out where to go and what to expect when you get there. Each one of the balloons on that map, if you click it, it will link you to the YouTube videos created for that location. I did that for you. That's for you. That's your map. It helps you figure out where to go and what to expect when you get there. Let's talk about some some Texas State Parks. Now these are going to be in no particular order. I'm not going to rank them best to worst or anything like that. These are 10 Texas State Parks that I really think you should see. And it rhymes with 23. So <laughs> I'm a poet and I know it. I wanted to open in an epic location. And this will be the number one on our list. And you need to go see it because it may not be a Texas State Park for very much longer. I'm at Fairfield Lake State Park. And this, this has been one of my, my top five favorite Texas State Parks since I've, bef since before I started the channel. Fairfield Lake State Park is built on Fairfield Lake. Fairfield Lake was constructed to provide water for a power plant. That power plant was taken offline and demolished. I don't know, it was taken offline about 10 years ago and the water warmed up. At one time, there were red drum and tilapia in this park. And when the power plant was shut down, it, 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 the lake cooled and those died off. But this is just such a beautiful, beautiful place. Always so quiet, except on holiday weekends. And it gets a little bit, a little bit rowdy, but as far as the atmosphere goes, we're far enough from all of your major thoroughfares that there's, there's no road noise. There's not a whole lot of recreational boating on the lake. There's fishing. There's not anybody out here skiing and riding jet skis. And as you see, the, the water's really low right now. Usually the water's about halfway up that bank. It's not a real huge lake, but I, I've been told the fishing is really good in this lake. I've not ever spent enough time here to, <laughs> to do much fishing. I use it as a waypoint stop because it's like right off a of highway, uh, right off of Interstate 45, south of Dallas. Recently renovated. My first visit here was prior to the renovation. And the sites were, eh, all right. But now the sites are all just wonderful. A lot of pull through sites. There's no 50 amp service here. There's no full connection service here, but they do have dump stations. So number one on our list of the top 10 must see in 23 Texas State Parks is gonna be Fairfield Lake. You need to get out here and see it because it may not be here very much longer. And the new owner may not renew the lease for the Texas State Park. We'll turn it into a bunch of million dollar homes. It'll be a sad, huge, tragic, sad loss to the state of Texas. Man, it hurts me just saying that. Our number two Number two on the list. The number two Texas State Park that you must see in 2023 is the newly renovated Galveston Island State Park. 
Now in the past, when I visited Galveston Island State Park, I was always left wanting more. I'm not a real big beach guy, but I am a big RV guy. And the way it was set up before, it just really wasn't an RV friendly place. Now, I know some people are saying that the new beachside campground is a, seems a little crowded compared to what it was, but before you could never get in. And if you did get in, you didn't have any connections. There's no power, no water. Uh, the facilities, the, the bathrooms and showers were very much dated and in, in dire need of, of renovation. Now, they have built a fantastic RV campground so that you can get level, you have power, you have water, you have a sh canopy shade structure over your table, you're right there by the beach, the restroom facilities are, they're, they're the best that I have seen in the Texas State Park system with granite counters and tile enclosures and there's plenty of opportunities to shower. Lots of them. They, they, they went above and beyond in the facility creation for the newly renovated Galveston Island State Park. Our number two on the list. Number three on the list. And, and I, this was on my top five list, but I think, I think you need to take a trip out west and go visit the Davis Mountain State Park. It's a beautiful place. It's, a, it's a, at, at elevation, so you're cooler during the summer. And you're right there by the McDonald Observatory on the high side. Now on the low side, you can go to the Fort Davis National Historic Site, which is the Fort, Fort Davis, the Calvary Fort. It is an educational experience. And the town itself, Fort Davis, very neat, eclectic little town. You could go see a bunch of rattlesnakes there. That's, that's number three on our list. Number four. I think we need to go to the Panhandle this time. Now, there, there's two great state parks up there in the Panhandle. We have Paladero Canyon, which gets all of the fame. And then you have Caprock Canyons, which is, I think it's the same watershed. It's actually not very far from Paladero, but it's a whole different vibe. Caprock Canyons is the, the location for the Texas State Bison Herd, which is a genetically pure strain of the South Plains Bison. Uh, the progenitors of that, the, the start, the, the livestock that started that were the calves rescued by Charles Goodnight and his wife. Actually, his wife made him go rescue all these calves when the bison were being slaughtered. Uh, and they maintained that as a unique strain of the, the bison, North American bison species, until they gifted that to, or donated that to the Texas Parks and Wildlife. Uh, so you can see these unique plains bison. Don't get out and try to pet them. They're not nice animals. They'll, they actually, bison kill more people in the United States than wolves or mountain lions. Don't be dumb and go try to pet a bison. They're not friendly. I just think that that's a, a very unique ecosystem. It reminds me a lot of the Southern Utah Red Rock area. Uh, it's just a beautiful place. It's so quiet there. Uh, you, you can't go wrong. And that's located next to the town of Kitty Quay. In case you're looking at that going, how do you pronounce that? It's Kitty Quay. That was number four on our list. Caprock Canyon. Number five on our must-see in 23 Texas State Park list. We're going to go to the east. We're going to go to the east side and pay a visit to Atlanta State Park, located on wright Patman Lake, deep in the East Texas Piney Woods. Atlanta State Park is so quiet. There's, there's not a whole lot of road, or not any road noise. Occasionally you get a boater crowd, not too often, but it, it's the quintessential 
East Texas Piney Woods location. Lots of tall pine trees. You can hear the wind blowing through the trees. And when the wind blows across those pine needles, it creates negative ions. So you just feel good when you're camping there. They do have full connection, a full connection loop. Uh, most of those are pull through. Really good hiking trails. They've got water access. Yeah, that's a great place. You should go visit it. It is well worth the drive to see Dangerfield State Park. So Atlanta, Atlanta State Park is number five on our top 10 must see in 23 Texas State Park list. Number six, I think we need to go down to the Lost Pines region of Texas. And, and if you don't know what that is, that's, that's down around the Bastrop area, east of Austin. There's a group, there's a, a pine forest there that was isolated during the last ice age. And they've adapted to survive on less water than your loblolly, they're a, a species of loblolly pine. And they, they don't need as much water. The loblolly likes a lot of water. Buescher State Park is not too far from Bastrop State Park. If you recall, about 10 years ago, Bastrop State Park burned. And it went from being a beautiful forest and to, to not, <laughs> but the forest is on the way back. Buescher did not burn. And Buescher State Park is located on a small lake. They have a relatively new RV loop, super quiet, in, in large part thanks to the pine trees. Uh, it's not a real heavily trafficked park because there's not a huge draw there. There's, but there's, you can kayak on the lake, you can bike and hike, and there's also a a scenic byway, a road that goes from Buescher State Park to Bastrop State Park. So you can actually experience two parks in one visit. So number six on the list, Buescher State Park. You really should, you should check that one out. So for number seven, I got, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about unique tree species in the state of Texas. Number seven must see in 2023 Texas State Parks. We're gonna go down into the Edwards Plateau region, just south of the Llano Escondido, and pay a visit to the Big Tooth Maples in Lost Maples State Natural Area. It's kind of one of those gray areas. It's, it's, not it's not considered a park. It's a natural area with a great RV campground. And it is, it, it is a hiker's paradise. And what makes the Lost Maples State Natural Area truly unique? It's, it's another one of those isolated forests. So the big tooth maple that you will find in the Lost in, in Lost Maples is uh, once again a, a genetically unique species of maple that was isolated during the last ice age. And during the fall, the colors there are, they rival anything that you would find in the Northeast. Plenty of hiking, not so much else going on, and certainly don't plan on having a phone conversation because you're, you're down in a valley and there is no cell connection. Closest thing we found was like five miles away at a little convenience store, they had free Wi-Fi. So number seven, Lost Maples. Number eight, I think we need to go down to the Big Thicket. I really like the Big Thicket area. It's just so much biodiversity there. Most people don't know this, but the Big Thicket region of Texas receives more annual rainfall than the Northwest. People think of rain, uh, the Northwest as the wettest area in North America, which it's actually not. Down by Houston, they get more rain than anywhere else. 
and that that leads to just lots of beautiful trees and wildlife and there's few places better to experience that big thicket campground than the Martin Dyes Jr. State Park located on the B.A. Stinningham Reservoir. You want to visit that during shoulder seasons ideally during the summer there's nobody there primarily because it's not a real deep lake six to eight feet and it gets really warm and no one wants to swim in that warm water except alligators but the state park is fantastic there's more campsites there i think than in any other texas state park or close that would be rivaling one of the the, the largest for campsites Lots of great stuff to do from bank fishing. Be mindful of the alligators. Don't feed the alligators. They have kayak rentals so you can do some really fun kayak trails, biking, hiking, fishing, camping. And it's super quiet there because it's not a real heavily trafficked park. Martin dies, so that's got us at eight. So for number nine, if you haven't been, you need to go visit the Mission Tejas State Park. And one of the reasons I feel that's crucial, if you're a Texan, Mission Tejas State Park is, the, is located on the OSR, the Old San Antonio Road. That is a road. It started with a trail. That's one of the oldest traveled man-made, man-traveled thoroughfares in North America. Uh, there's a Spanish mission. There was a Spanish mission built right in that locale. There's a recreation there now. You're, you're right there next to the old San Antonio Road and you can hike for miles. You're in the East Texas Piney Woods. I think that's the Davy Crockett National Forest. Maybe the Angelina National Forest. Uh, anyway, it's a beautiful national forest, beautiful place. It's a small state park. Not a whole lot of campsites there, and there's only a few that can actually accommodate something of this size. So you got to plan ahead. They have a recently renovated visitor center. You're not too far from the Caddo Mounds National Historic Site, but of course that was wiped out in a tornado a few years ago, and I think they're in the process of rebuilding that. You're convenient to the, the town of Crockett. It's a beautiful, beautiful place to camp. And you talk about quiet. There's not a whole lot of people there, so it's always super quiet. So number nine is the Mission Tejas State Park. Number 10 on our must-see in 2023 Texas State Parks is another Texas State Park that the clock is ticking. Not for the state park, but for the reason the park exists. And that is Seminole Canyon State Park. You gotta make a drive to get there. It is way down past Del Rio on the, the Rio Grande. It is upstream from Lake Amistad. And Lake Amistad is the, the reason that things are fading out. But what makes Seminole Canyon a place that you must visit? It is, the park exists so that you can see the pictographs. 10,000 year old paintings on a rock wall in an overhang. Humans have been living, had been living there. The camera got hot. <laughs> That's a nice problem to have in February. Got this beautiful sunshine here. And just made this black camera get so high, so had to had to jump over. So we were talking about number 10 on our list, which is Seminole Canyon State Park. Truly a unique experience in the world, in, in Texas State Parks. There's not a whole lot else going on at Seminole Canyon other than the canyon itself. You're right across the Pecos River, and oh, by the way, the bridge that crosses the Pecos there is the highest bridge in the state of Texas. That's a long way down to the water. You see a lot of a lot of YouTubers shooting 
shots, taking pictures and shooting footage from the observation platform that overlooks that bridge. But anyway, just across the river is Langtree, Texas. There's the Judge Roy Bean Historical Museum there. Truly a fascinating place to spend a couple of hours learning about a, a very eccentric man. <laughs> Some say he was a little crazy, but he was the law west of the Pecos. What he said was law. <clears throat> if you get down that way, make sure you stop in and say hi to Judge Roy Bean. But more importantly, go to Seminole Canyon because the Lake Amistad Reservoir has raised the, the humidity in that area, the, the paintings are fading. And it's not going to be too very much longer that you won't be able to see them at all. So you got to hurry and get down there. Now, pretty well, that brings us to the end of our top 10 must-see in 2023 Texas State Parks. I have a lot of people ask me what's my favorite Texas State Park. There's not one. You can't have a favorite Texas State Park. You can have some that are way better than others. And this is one of those, Fairfield Lake State Park. It'll truly be a loss to the state of Texas if we lose this state park. So you better get out here and see it before it's gone. We're done. I'm gonna wrap it up. So if this is your first visit to the Dude RV channel, and I really appreciate you stopping by and I hope you found some value in this little video. If you did, if you liked it, click on that thumbs up and blast me out across your social media. That helps so much. And if you've not already, I would be most honored if you would consider clicking on the subscribe button. That really helps me out too. And for those of you who have been following along, thank you. That's why I get to do what I do. That is, that's why, that's why I'm out here. I, I, I do this, but the sun would glare you out. So you get to see the back of the RV. Here we go. And for those of you who have been following along, thank you. That's why I get to do what I do. And it's for you. What I'm doing is for you. And for my patrons, I am most grateful. You rock. All right, y'all come back now, you hear?